Hi class, how you doing today? Let me come around here. So you finally get to see me again. I know this is a momentous day uh, in uh, the course of your day that you get to see me again. Woohoo! So today what I want to do is to demonstrate the concepts of saturation mixing ratio, mixing ratio, and relative humidity. So to do that I have uh, three peanut butter jars of different sizes. Uh, the peanut butter jars represent the saturation mixing ratio of the air, the amount of water vapor that the air could potentially hold uh, at certain temperatures. Okay, So uh, saturation mixing ratio is temperature dependent. So we know that the warmer the air is, the more water vapor it can hold. And so I have three different peanut butter jars to represent air at three different saturation mixing ratios. So the, the little jar, the baby jar, represents colder air, okay? It will, it will not take as much water vapor to saturate the air because the saturation mixing ratio of colder air is lower, okay? If we warm up the air a little bit, then the amount of water vapor the air could hold uh, increases. Another way of saying the saturation mixing ratio increases. And then we have the daddy-sized uh, peanut butter jar. And uh, so this represents the warmest air of the three and so the warmer the air, the more water vapor the air could potentially hold, okay? So the uh, water that I have over here, uh, the water represents the mixing ratio, the actual amount of water vapor in the air. So if I take the small jar, which represents um, air at the lowest of the three temperatures, okay? And I add some water vapor to the air, okay? That will then show us the concept of, here we go. So I got the little baby jar and uh, I filled it up with water. So saturation mixing ratio, the water represents the mixing ratio and the ratio of the two gives you the relative humidity. So the, the jar is about halfway full of water. Okay, and so this tells me that the relative humidity is about 50%. Okay, uh, the, the air is holding, the jar is holding half of the uh, water or water vapor that it could potentially hold. Now, if I add some more water vapor to the air, okay, fill it up to about there, now the jar is about three quarters full. So now the relative humidity is increased to about 75%. And if I keep adding water vapor to the air, okay, we get to the point where the air is saturated. Okay, relative humidity is 100%. The jar is holding all the water vapor that it could potentially hold at this temperature. Now, what happens if I increase the temperature? So I've got uh, air at its lowest temperature of our three here. And now I'm going to increase the temperature. I'm going to increase the saturation mixing ratio of the air by increasing the temperature. But I'm going to hold the amount of water vapor of the air uh, in the air. Uh, constant, which means I'm not going to change the amount of water actually in the air. I'm not going to change the amount of water actually in this jar. But by increasing the air temperature and increasing the saturation mixing ratio, look what happens to the relative humidity of the air. It goes from 100%, okay, and by increasing the uh, temperature of the air, Okay, I now have a lower relative humidity. It looks like it's maybe two-thirds full. Okay, so uh, air that was at a cooler temperature at 100% relative humidity, if I warm up that air, okay, it is now at uh, about two-thirds full, about 67% relative humidity. Okay? Now, what happens if I add water vapor to this air? Okay, so we go up to, what, about three-quarters. It's about 75% relative humidity now, and I, I keep going. Then we go up to 100% relative humidity. Now this air is saturated. Air at this temperature is saturated. Okay, it's holding all of the water vapor it could potentially uh, hold. Okay, but now let's increase the temperature once again. Increasing the temperature increases the saturation mixing ratio. It increases the amount of water vapor the air could potentially hold. Okay, so now what will the relative humidity, which is currently at 100%, but if I warm up the temperature of the air, what happens to the relative humidity of the air? You'll notice that the temperature of the, or the relative humidity of the air 
uh, once again goes down because I've increased the temperature of the air. I increased the uh, ability of the uh, air to hold more water. And so now it looks like uh, relative humidity might be about 60, 65% at this uh, new temperature. So now let's increase the relative humidity up to maybe 75%. Okay, so now this uh, peanut butter jar is about 75% um, full of water. So the uh, relative humidity is 75%. Okay, now let's go the other way. Let's cool the air and see what happens. So as we cool the air but keep the mixing ratio the same, if we cool the air, the saturation mixing ratio is going to decrease. But if we keep the amount of water vapor in the air constant, okay, then as we go to a cooler temperature, okay, that should increase um, the, the relative humidity of the air. Okay? Now, this is what most students really like, is we start to, we go from a higher temperature to a lower temperature. And in doing so, here we go, it's a 75%, 80%, 90%, uh-oh, 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 oh, we overflowed. What did that overflow represent? Okay, when we cooled the air, okay, we cooled it down to the dew point temperature, the temperature uh, at which you have to cool the air in order for saturation to be achieved, obviously, we, we achieved saturation, the relative humidity is 100%, but we went beyond that. We went beyond saturation and we saw the, uh, the water overflow. So what does that overflowing water represent? That overflowing water represents condensation. Okay? All of that water that overflowed represented uh, water vapor condensing into liquid water. And so if we were at the ground surface, that might be dew, it might be fog. Uh, if we were up in the atmosphere, uh, that condensation, uh, the water vapor would have condensed uh, into liquid water droplets and formed a cloud. Okay, And so right now we are uh, at saturation. Okay? And if we go back to the higher temperature, okay, once again, now by increasing the temperature, we increase the saturation mixing ratio, the ability of the air to hold more water vapor, and now we're back at about 60% relative humidity. But if we cool the air again, uh, back to this temperature, now we're back to 100% relative humidity. Okay? So hopefully this demonstration uh, gives you a better uh, idea of how saturation, mix, uh, saturation mixing ratio, mixing ratio, and relative humidity relate to one another. Okay? Uh, if you have questions, make sure you contact me. And I'll be happy to uh, try to help you out as best I can. All righty? Have a good day. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.